Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Today I want to talk about cables, and specifically, cable testers, devices that will allow you to test a cable that may not be working right, and help you to troubleshoot the problem that you've got with it. Also, I want to talk about the NCE network cable, and we'll go over that briefly. As far as notifications, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. That way you'll be notified when I post a new video. And also, take a look at the video that I previously posted uh, on subscriptions and notifications here. I'll add a link to it up above here so that you can go directly to it. And it talks about the way that YouTube decides when to send you a notification. Because you might not always get a notification if you don't make the right uh, selection uh, as far as the, your choices for notifications. So, I'm going to go ahead, zoom down on the workbench, and we'll get started with this video on cable testing. Okay, so let's, let's finish up what I was uh, talking about last week as far as cable, or last time. This is the NCE connector panel, whatever you want to call it. And, you know, as I showed you, that it's got two uh, connectors here on the back. Now, you'll notice that these connectors are not the smaller uh, of the, the RJ12. This one fits in here. It's a slop fit, to say the least. Uh, what they use is the larger RJ45 connector that I showed you the other day. So that, and, and in this case, instead of using it with a flat telephone type cable, this is a round cable. This is an Ethernet cable. It's called a uh, Cat5 or Cat6. Uh, I think there's a Cat5e, and what that means is Category 5. And they changed over time. We've had Cat4, 5, 6. And it just refers to the amount of shielding and, and the like uh, inside the cable. And these cables are very good at rejecting electronic noise that uh, occurs on model railroads. I mean, we have a lot of things on model railroads that do generate electronic noise besides our DCC systems. We have 12 volt DC buses running under the layouts and we have noisy electronic motors running up on the track. So this particular type of cable is, is very good about rejecting interference from that kind of electronic noise. They're a very good cable and this is what they're using now. You can make these using the uh, crimper that I showed you the other day. It just simply fits in here. The wires slide in and you crimp them and it works fine. Um, but you can also buy cables. This is a cable that NCE sells uh, for their uh, products. So that's just one type of other kind of cable that you might run into. So let's talk about cables. Now, one of the things that you'll run into occasionally is that you'll crimp up a set of cables and hook up your command station to your booster or to your throttle connectors and various other devices on the layout, and things won't work right. So what is the solution? Well, or what is the reason first, and then what is the solution? Well, very commonly, the most common problem is failure to get a really good crimp with your crimping device. And this varies depending on the quality of the device itself. A good sturdy device will give you a good crimp every time. And, you know, you come out and it will work. But occasionally you might not crimp down. I always crimp twice with a good firm grip on it. But occasionally you might end up with one that doesn't work properly. And very often, all that's required is to take that cable uh, connector, put it back in the crimper, and give it another crimp or two, and then plug it back in. And usually that is all that is required to get these things working again. Another way to test them, one way to test them though, is Digitrack, Digitrax, excuse me, uh, has this LT1 uh, tester. It can be used for testing decoders, or it can be used for testing cables. And they tell you in their instruction sheet how to do both. So let's, uh, let's take a look at how this works. Basically, it is a standard RJ12 
cable and connector here that comes with it. So you can hook it up to a, uh, a Digitrax cable, and I've got one hooked up to my system. And this one is connected uh, to my uh, control panel uh, network here. So let me go ahead and plug in the end of this extension cable. And you'll see that four LEDs light up on here. Let me show you that again. You can see that there's no light. Turn it on or plug it in and it turns on. And in this case, there are four LEDs and all four of them light up. And what those do is they basically tell you that all your wires are good. So if you've got any wires that are not conducting properly, that have not been properly um, crimped and uh, the pins have gone into the wires, then one of these might not light up. And that's your indication that it's bad. But there's an easier way or a better way to determine whether or not the cable is really working well. And that is this tester here that I got from a company called Jameco, J-A-M-E-C-O. They're another one of these companies that sells a lot of electronic products like Mauser and Digi uh, DigiKey and all electronics. Now this particular uh, cable tester, it's very inexpensive. It sells for $15.75. I just checked that a minute ago. And it works off of a nine volt battery. And all you have to do, oh, let me point out, it has RJ, the smaller RJ12 connector here. And over here is the larger RJ45 connector slot. And on this part, there's another RJ45. And on this, this end, there's the RJ12. So this device can be used to test cables that have the RJ1112 connector, which is that one that I was showing you the other day that is set up for six pins and six con uh, conductors. It can also uh, work with the four conductor version of this. So in, in some of these you get, they only have four pins on them. And those are used for things like throttles. Um, it also then will work with the larger cables, like I just showed you from NCE. So this guy can be tested. See, that fits in there. There. Helps to push in when you pull out. Okay, so how do these work? Well, basically, you plug in this, this uh, end of the cable here, and then the other end of the cable goes in on this device. And then you simply turn it on and watch on this side. And you can see it's running through a series of lights, okay? So it's one through six. This is a six conductor cable. And so it's testing the connection between each end of the cable to see if it's continuous. You could also set this for a much slower test rate. You can see how it slowed down when I did that. And then it's gonna start over again and go through them all. And internally, there's some electronics that do the testing on these cables. It has a really nice little manual here with instructions included on what the different readouts would mean. So like, you know, obviously if one of these pairs of lights, number one or number two, don't light up, then it means that there is no connection and that particular uh, wire is not connected at, at one end or the other. There's other things it can test for shorts, it can test for, um, dual losses of con uh, connectivity, various other things. So it's a very versatile uh, tester. And like I said, it's less than $16. Uh, the neat thing about this is it comes apart. So you don't have to remove the entire cable to test it. This device can be put at one end of a 1,000 foot long cable, and this piece can go at the other end. And you can sit there and you can see what the uh, t uh, tester is telling you as far as how good the connection is at each end of the cable. And in most cases, unless you've got a broken connector in there somewhere, in most cases, by simply recrimping 
you can fix the problem. But you will occasionally run into situations where during the manufacturing progress, uh, during the manufacturing process, one of the cables inside or one of the wires inside the cable may be broken. It may be bad. And in that case, you might literally have to replace an entire cable. So this is, you know, a very inexpensive solution for testing, particularly if you're going to be uh, building a very large layout, I would definitely invest in one of these. Uh, for a small home layout, a small club layout, you might not need to invest in something like this uh, until you, of course, run into a problem you can't solve. And then that's when these things are worth their weight in gold because it will keep you from losing a lot of hair over the testing process. Now, the other thing that I want to uh, point out that you should always do, whenever you are making up cables and connecting devices together, plug the two ends into the two different devices, turn on the system, and see if it works. Do not wire an entire layout, throw the switch, and stand back and wonder why something's not working. Because then you're going to have to go back and pull all those cables again and disconnect them, find out where the break is, where the bad connection is, and then do the crimping and testing. If you work from your booster out, installing the wires as you crimp them, and testing to make sure whether or not the system is working at each point in the installation process. You can fix the problem as you detect it. If you get out there and you've got 10 cables installed, you don't know which one is incorrect. Obviously, the thing to do is take the last one out and work backwards, but, you know, that's a long process. It just saves a lot of time in the long run to go ahead, test it as you install it, test it as you make these cables up. And like I said, it's an inexpensive way to find out whether or not your cables are good from the get-go before you even hook them up to a command station, booster, throttle connection, whatever. It's that simple and straightforward, folks. Digitrax sells a cable making kit and it sells for $50. It includes a crimper like this one here. It includes one of these testers. Uh, there are 20 of these RJ1112 connectors included, and they toss in 50 foot of the flat uh, eight, uh, six wire cable. So that could get you started. I'm sure though, you can probably find it uh, at various dealers online for less than $50, but I also encourage you to shop around, check out your prices on, you know, Mauser and uh, the various other sources that I pointed out, all electronics, find out which one's going to be the cheapest alternative for you. So that's about it for today. Um, I hope that gives you a better feeling for how you go about testing cables uh, as you uh, build your system up and also how to go about fixing cables. There's just basically one way, give it another crimp and see how it works. Well, that's all I have for today. Uh, once again, get yourself a cable tester and a good crimper so that you'll get good solid fittings and crimps and won't have to really use the tester, hopefully. Uh, in the meantime, uh, I uh, might not be able to get a video up next week. I've got a commitment coming up over the weekend that's going to stretch uh, into next week. And I'm not sure if I'm going to have time before then to get another video put together and scheduled on YouTube. So you might not see anything from the DCC guy uh, that uh, next week at all. So take an opportunity to catch up on the videos that you haven't watched or that you haven't watched uh, completely. So have a good week and a uh, good weekend and next week. And uh, uh, thanks a lot for watching. And don't forget, subscribe to the channel. Bye now.